which is dates to the Saturday, November 16 governorship election in Kogi State. The violence is already rearing its head with tear gas fired by policemen to disperse hoodlums almost disrupting a stakeholders' meeting. It unfolded today where the chairman of the Independence National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, and the Inspector General of the Police, Mr. Mohamed Abad Adamu, led other key actors in the poll to deliberate on logistics and security. Commotion ensued when the governorship candidates of the Social Democratic Party, Natasha Akpoti, arrived at the venue where she was allegedly attacked by suspected thugs. It's a stakeholders' meeting called at the instance of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, ahead of Saturday's governorship election in Kogi State. Political parties, civil society organizations, security agencies, clergymen and traditional chiefs meet with the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, the Director General, NYSC, Brigadier General Shaibu Ibrahim, and the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, on ways to ensure safety at the poll. The INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, reiterates that the smart card readers will be employed during the election, and as he, frown, and as he frowns at voters' inducement, he calls on security agents to monitor such activities. How prepared is INEC? The short answer is that we are ready. So far, the Commission has successfully implemented 12 out of a 14-point plan for the election as required by law. We have just two more activities outstanding. The Inspector General of Police assured the readiness of the police to provide adequate security during and after the election. Every polling unit will be secured the INEC offices will be secured. The INEC materials will be secured. The NYC personnel that are deployed will be secured. The electorate will be secured. The arrival of the state governor, Yahya Bailu, momentarily stopped the speech of the president of the resident electoral commissioner. <coughs> But at the signing of the peace accord, the room suddenly becomes uncomfortable with the crowd reaching out for handkerchiefs to cover their noses. It turns out the commotion outside the hall was an attack on the candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Natasha Boti. Violence was also unleashed on her vehicle and driver who was receiving medical treatment. On my way to participate at the INEX organized political stakeholders meeting at Adriana Hotel in Lokoja. I was attacked and harassed. There were lots of policemen. There were over 500 men from the security agencies in different uniforms. I recognized SARS, the police, and civil defense, and many others. The place was heavily, um, how do I put it? There were a lot of military men around. And as I approached the hall, I saw some young men in Mufti. The first attack was a verbal assault. The man calling me a prostitute. He said, there comes the prostitute. Look at Natasha Ashewo, Natasha Ashewo, get out. You are not wanted here. And I smiled. I kept on walking. They were just booing at me and I had to walk out. I didn't go, they just walked me out of the place. And I was in the car for a while. I called on the DSS, um, the director of DSS in Kogi State, and I told him what happened. He said he already knew, and that he was surprised why and disappointed why none of the security agencies could stop the talks. Responding to the allegations, the All Progressives Congress insists the problem of Kogi State is Ms. Aporti herself. With just days to the election, the concern of all is how INEC and security agencies will ensure a credible poll.
Meanwhile, a federal high court sitting in Abuja has given the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission until March 2020 to have a former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mrs. Dezani Alison Madweke, extradited to Nigeria from the United Kingdom. The commission had in November 2018 filed a 13-count charge of money laundering against the former minister, accusing her of unlawfully taking into her possession the sum of 39.7 million dollars and 3.32 billion naira with which she allegedly bought choice properties in abuja lagos and port harcourt at the resumed hearing of the suit justice ijama Odrupu threatened to strike out the money laundering case should the anti-graft agency fail to produce the defendant in court by march 2020. the prosecuting counsel mr farouk abdullah had earlier on pleaded with the judge to adjourn the case indefinitely on the grounds that the EFCC was facing challenges in its bid to extradite the defendant. Mrs. Diazani has been in the United Kingdom facing corruption investigations since 2015 when she left office as minister. In the meantime, as the Edo State Investment Summit 2019 comes to a close, Governor Godwin Obaseki says his government remains committed to driving an investor-friendly environment. He insists his government has set in motion the next level for all who are ready to capitalize on opportunities created by the government to encourage investment, especially small and medium-scale enterprises. I'd like to recognize... Dignitaries, captains of industry, small and medium-scale entrepreneurs, as well as some unemployed youths, are here gathered for the third edition of the Alao Daru Summit. Governor Godwin Obasaki arrives to flag off the finale of the program. The chairman of Alao Daru, the Ado Summit. For the chairman of the Alao Daru Summit 2019, the state government has recorded numerous achievements over the past three years. We in Edo State must discuss how to build on the basic education and healthcare initiatives that are now being implemented so, that, so we can deliver relevant capacity and world-class productivity for tomorrow's global economy. The chief host, Governor Basaki, gives assurance of his unwavering resolve to make the state a haven for investment. We have built over 150 roads covering more than 200 kilometers in urban and rural communities to facilitate easy movements of goods and people which have opened up these communities so that businesses can thrive in them. Then he speaks on his plan to engender ease of doing business in the state. With Edo Geographical Information System, we have increased the efficiency in land administration and improved public investor confidence through the digitization of land administration, such that from next month, December, we are launching a campaign to issue C of O's in 90 days at a minimum cost of 50,000 Naira. A Malaysian businessman, Ita Tap, reveals the areas of collaboration with the state government towards driving the economy to greater heights. The lab is something that the governor intends to do here in Edo shortly to enable the private sector and the public sector to come together to agree on their roles in driving the vision to the next level. The 2019 Alago Daru Summit coincides with the third anniversary of the Edo State Governor's first tenure in office. It's time for business news. Here's Anne Mawodo. Thank you, Marachi. Good evening and welcome to Business News. U.S.-based multinational financial services company Visa has concluded plans to buy 20% stake in Nigeria's largest electronic payments group, InterSwitch. The acquisition by the global payments giant, which was first reported on November the 10th, places a billion-dollar valuation on the indigenous electronic payment company, and it's a major boost ahead of the proposed initial public offering slated for the London Stock Exchange next year.
The investment by Visa is the latest in a string of moves by global payment companies backing African fintech companies and seeking high-growth bets on emerging markets. In September this year, ratings agency Moody's assigned InterSwitch as a B2 corporate family rating, noting that it processes about 90% of the total electronic transactions right here in Nigeria. This year's edition of the Abu Dhabi International Petroleum Exhibition and Conference has commenced in the capital of the United Arab Emirates. The event, which is one of the world's leading oil and gas conferences and exhibitions, is set to welcome 160,000 attendees from November the 11th to the 14th. UAE's Minister of State and CEO of state oil firm and uh, group, Dr. Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber gave the opening address while former U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, who delivered a keynote address in managing the 21st century political risk, shared her own insights for organizational resilience in the coming years. At the ministerial panel of the ongoing events, ministers from Oman, India, Morocco and Scotland highlighted policy measures and strategic partnerships needed to secure a sustainable and affordable energy future while global business leaders' sessions discussed the connection between technology and energy and new strategies industry leading to companies and ensuring they embark to capture growth. Well, the stock market has resumed trading from the Muslim holiday right here in Nigeria, and it has resumed with positive sentiments at the close of business. Investors are still extending bargain hunting from Friday's session into Tuesday. Chimezi Obiwagu has the details for us. Thank you, Anne, and welcome to the stock market report. Well, investors started the new trading week with renewed optimism in the equities market following the directive by the central bank on the fixed income market, which drove investors' interest towards the stocks since last week. All the five major sector indices closed in the green today. However, that bullish sentiment was driven mainly by the industrial goods and the banking sectors. Now let's look at the numbers. The industrial goods gained by 1.56%, all thanks to Cement Company of Northern Nigeria. That company share was on full bid today because investors are taking position following the recent proposed merger with Obu Cement. On the activity chart, over 378 million shares valued at over 7 billion naira were churned out in nearly 4,800 deals. Our stocks from the banking sector contributed to that volume and value with Zenith Bank top on the chart. When the closing gong sounded, the overall index went up the ladder by 0.54%. Well, we can only wait to see how sustainable this rally will be as the week rolls by. And that was the Stock Market Report. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. And with those green numbers, we end business news tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Nwawadu.